Wine Abbers. My name is Jesse Meekum from Wine Ab. It stands for You Need a Budget for Your Wedding. You do. And that's what we want to talk about today. This is another Whiteboard Wednesday. Uh, my daughters are all tiny. And uh, oldest one is eight. And I've got 30 years, according to my calculations, to save for her wedding. Um, this is the key, though. This is the key. You start early. Uh, we do not want to pretend that that's not a significant expense. When you think about college tuition, that's probably one of the biggest, by far, if you're deciding to help your kids out with that, and if they were wanting to go somewhere expensive, uh, you'd want to start early there. Weddings, uh, weddings can be pricey. They don't have to be, and we'll get there next. But they can be very, very expensive. And the tricky thing is, you don't know exactly when they're going to happen. Like a good old-fashioned uh, transmission falling out of your car, it's going to be really expensive, and when it hits, you maybe weren't ready for it. Could be a wedding. So you start early. I don't know if the baby needs to be, you know, just two days home from the hospital and you start. Perhaps. But you start early. And it sounds funny to put away 50 bucks a month for a wedding right when a baby is born, or 100 bucks a month if this baby's really going to want a huge wedding. I haven't done the math. I'm just throwing that out. But you would want to start early, right? Maybe you decide, hey, when, uh, if tradition holds, you know, if she turns 12 years old, then we start saying, I don't know. However early you decide, earlier is better. In saving for anything, earlier is better. And with weddings, it's absolutely the same case. Earlier is better, principle number one. Number two, you cap the budget. You cap it. You operate zero-based. You could start up a new budget in YNAB, call it wedding, and work within the confines of that just to move numbers around. So as you're sitting there with your bride-to-be and you guys are kind of looking at all this, you're saying, okay, we'd spend this much on flowers, this much on invitations, this much on uh, a venue or whatever. And I'm not good at this, by the way. I've never, I didn't plan my own wedding and uh, my mother-in-law did it all. So I have no experience with it. But I do know that you cap it. And you can't pretend that the money is infinite. Anytime we pretend we have infinite money, we get into trouble. Same goes with the weddings. So you just would want to say, okay, here's our limit, and then we can work and juggle and move things around all in here, and everything will be just fine as long as we don't go past the limit. That's the key. So you cap it early, early on. This is what we've got. This is what we have to work with, and you just work with it. It's reality, and the budget forces us, rightfully so, to work inside reality. It's healthy and it's effective, and it's the only way to operate. You do not borrow money and kind of pretend that reality isn't really happening. That's borrowing money in this case to pay for a wedding. Don't do that. You want to cap it, okay? Stay within the confines of your actual finite resources. Make them feel scarce so that you can prioritize what's most important for your special day. Same thing as with all budgeting, priorities, cap, work within the confines of that finite reality. And then the last thing was maybe become a prohibitionist just for a short period of time, maybe go dry. I was doing just a little bit of research. That is expensive. Luckily, I'm not a drinker, and I'm just kind of kidding, actually. But anyway, prohibition. Maybe wasn't such a bad thing as it related to weddings. Not sure. I will see you guys next week.